Modern technology holds forth the promise of a better day in American housing. Modern materials, sensible design, and many pleasing refinements. Yet today, nearly all of us live in houses designed largely in terms of house building knowledge that is not much better than that of a century ago. Natural lighting may be no better than it was in buildings of medieval Europe. Methods of construction may be as wasteful as those employed 4,000 years ago. Let us take a sampling of America's houses. Only 10 out of 100, owned usually by people with the highest incomes, are as good as this, costing $5,500, built 10 years ago, fairly modern. Let us look at one half the hundred, 50% of America's houses. They are no better than these, 25 years old, worth about $3,000, lacking some modern conveniences. The lowest 10 in our sampling of 100 typical American houses, occupied by those with lowest incomes, are 50-year-old shacks worth about $200, chiefly as used lumber. What services should our houses give us, and how can we help to get them? First, there should be control of weather. Your house should protect you from extremes of weather, cold and heat, snow, wind and rain. But most houses are not wholly weatherproof. For example, in winter there may be a needless loss of heat. 10% may escape through and around windows and doors. There may be a 15% loss through the walls. And worst of all, up to a 25% loss through ceilings and roof. A total waste of 50% or half the heat. How can this be corrected? Well, Mr. Jones and Ray are fitting glass storm sash outside the windows. This will cut down loss of heat by creating a dead air space between the storm sash and the windows. Inside, Bob is using caulking cement in an inexpensive caulking gun, sealing up cracks around the window frames. Up in the attic, Ray is helping Uncle John lay insulating materials over all the ceiling space. This four-inch blanket of bats will help to cut down the biggest heat loss of all. And as soon as they can afford it, the Joneses will have insulating material put into the walls to complete the job of controlling heat, summer and winter. This is a humidity gauge which indicates the moisture content of the air in the house. The reading of 10 shows the air is too dry. Here's another indication. Joints in furniture have dried and become loose, a sure sign of long exposure to air that's too dry. One easy way to get enough moisture is to keep a tea kettle boiling. Another way is to have plenty of plants in the house and to keep them well watered. This and the steam from the tea kettle supply much needed moisture for the air. The humidity gauge is a faithful indicator the humidity reading should usually be kept between 30 and 50. Mr. Jones now turns his attention to much needed roof repair. Through the roof, rain has come in to ruin walls and plaster. It's high time to tear off the old shingles and replace them with a new material that is inexpensive, weatherproof, and easy to apply. In addition to control of weather, your house should give you adequate light wherever needed. Mr. Brown and Fred are measuring the natural light admitted to their living room where eye strain commonly occurs. Fred has borrowed a light gauge which shows only 10 foot candles of light where there should be 30. Mr. Brown, who doesn't want to knock out a wall and set in another window, believes he has a practical way to let in more light. His decision is down with the heavy dark drapes and up with light ones. The difference is easily apparent, especially to those who engage in reading or sewing or other fine work. Overgrown shrubbery also keeps out the precious natural light. These rank growing vines are being torn away. And here are overgrown cedars which stifle the light at the windows. So out comes the biggest one to be replanted elsewhere. In the kitchen of the Howard home, the problem is artificial light. Mr. Howard has measured the light strength at the stove 
and is now at the sink. At these vital places, the reading is much too low, eight instead of 20 or more. This lack of light gives the Howards a good reason to install one of the newer fluorescent lighting fixtures. It is more ornamental than the old one, and incidentally, it uses much less electricity and throws out more light, more evenly distributed about the Howard kitchen. Another service aside from control of weather and humidity and control of light, our house should give us freedom from insect pests. Flies in particular bring in disease germs which they spread on everything they touch. Good screens are the answer to this. Screens kept in good repair and frequently repainted. Screens for all doors and windows will keep flies, mosquitoes, and other pests where they belong, outside. Keeping out disease is a part of a fourth service your house should provide, and that is safety. Here, a new light is being installed for the foot of the basement stairs, stairs which are often dark and crowded with carelessly deposited articles. A light placed properly, plus clear steps to the basement, are important safety features. Accidents may result from rotted or otherwise bad steps outside the house. Frank is determined that no accident shall happen to him or other members of the family because steps are neglected. Another of many safety features, the dead end street, which children may cross without fear of speeding cars. Still another service closely akin to safety, which our house should give, fire protection. These houses, in addition to being wooden, are dangerously close together, a definite fire hazard. Risk from fire is reduced if houses are spaced apart a distance about equal to their height. Brick or stone construction cuts down materially the fire risk from outside. So do asbestos shingles, which are resistant to fire and which can be laid over other materials. Finally, our houses should present as far as possible a pleasing appearance inside and out. Fresh outside paint makes your house a more pleasant place in which to have a home. And besides, paint protects the material it covers, thus saving money in the long run. So too, on the walls inside the house, fresh paint at little cost can help dispel grime and gloom. Decoration applied to walls also contributes to cheer. Anyone can apply transfer patterns, and nearly anyone can make stencils for repeat patterns such as this nursery wall design dealing with a familiar children's story. The cost of wallpaper is not great. The trick is in putting on the paper neatly. It's a trick nearly anyone can learn with a little experience and a few inexpensive tools. It's mostly matching and pasting and smoothly applying. Thus, while few of us may ever get the opportunity of designing and living in our dream house, we can improve the house in which we live. We can insulate against heat and cold. We can control the moisture content of the air. We can find ways to admit more natural light. We can improve our artificial lighting. We can protect ourselves against insect pests. We can take steps to make our houses safe. We can protect our houses by paint and make them nicer to look at. We can make them more cheerful inside. We can study housing in communities like this, designed so that children use parkway paths or overpasses across main highways in going from home to school each day and in going from school back to home without crossing streetly with speeding traffic. Where safe streets lead from home to business district, where the community recognizes that our houses ought to be much more than mere places of shelter from storms, that our houses ought to be safe and pleasant homes. <laughs>